haven't been here in so long but today we're back in Beverly Hills and really for no good reason other than to car shop the greatest day of my entire life took place right here at Marshall Goldman in Beverly Hills this is the dealer where I was able to acquire my first Koenigsegg ever the CCX it was transformative to who I am as a person maybe believe I could be the person I wanted today we've got Carly Kai and Monroe all look like you guys just woke up but what we're doing right now is we're shopping for a car not really for me but for my friend Kalai he just sold his Huracan Technica and it's time for him to upgrade to a big boy car. He's not even paying attention right now. Anyways. Well, looking at the car. No, 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 don't look at that. In. Let's look at all the cars before we look at that car. We gotta take it all in. Right now, you don't even know what you want. Oh, I know what I want. Tell him what you want. A Lamborghini Aventador, baby. Either SVJ, Ultimate, or something that the doors go up. It's the only way to go. So Kalai wants an SVJ Roadster, but if you really think about SVJ Roadsters, by the way, Jason's here too. He, he's the magician and her, him and Fernando helped me become a man when I bought my first Koenigsegg. The thing is, is about the SVJs, you have to think about the SVJ as right now the Revueltos are dropping. Literally the Revueltos are dropping today. Like right now, this week, my Revuelto is at Salt Lake City and uh, it's not through PPI yet, so I haven't bought it yet. But everybody that has an SVJ Roadster, everybody that has an SVJ Roadster, everybody has a Revuelto in order. I don't know how many people with $800,000 cars can keep both of them because the majority of $800,000 car people, they usually lease them and they drive them. And uh, if they don't, then, you know, they just store them in the garage and whatever, they yeah. buy the new one. I just feel like the car is going to come down in value. So I want him to get a very similar price car that's very rare and that you never see in the road. has a very bad engine, but it looks so good. And uh, I don't know if you guys can guess, but it's the 2000. 18 or 19 Ford GT. A big shout out to today's sponsor, Car Vertical. Have you ever wondered if your car has a hidden past? Well, Car Vertical is here to help, and let me show you how. Just enter your car's 17 digit VIN on Car Vertical's website. Their reports pull data from state registries, insurance companies, and so many more places to give you a full vehicle history report. Take a look at this report, for example. It reveals mileage history, any past accidents, and sometimes it even includes photos. Use my promo code HC for a 20% discount. Check the pinned comment below for a link to Car Vertical's website. Know your car's history today before you buy or sell. Thanks again to today's sponsor, Car Vertical. Now let's get back to today's video. Oh, come on, Jason. Stop. That's I some California. That's some California opinion shit right there. Stuff. And it's like, <laughs> if it was an eight cylinder, everybody would love it. It happens to be at a really efficient six. And so everybody bags on it. But like, uh, I mean, because the one of the greatest cars of all time happens to be its predecessor. Listen, I, I don't disagree, but like times <laughs> change. I mean, they just do. There's a lot of history behind the car, but it doesn't have that V12 sound that we're so yeah. used to in. Does that have the V8 sound? Does that have the V12 sound? Does that have the I mean, V10 sound? What's happening? I mean, everything is, I mean, the, the, the Huracan replacement's gonna be an eight cylinder. Yeah. It's no longer a 10. I know, I mean, but eight's still cooler than yeah, six. Yeah, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's performance based. It's, it's not just like yeah. specs, it's performance based. Do you like this car? I mean, that car is sick. The doors go up. So that was one of the qualifications. That's a, that's, that's a must. One of the things that I really like about this particular build is the interior. This two-tone. I love the white. Yeah, the white is just cool. I mean, the white is just really cool. This car is basically delivering miles. It's I saw that this car has 169 miles on it. It's, it's a new car. Wow. Car is, wow. car is literally brand new. It's got a lot of room, so the seats don't move. Well, it's, you know, it's uh, still a supercar. Yep. A little more room than a Huracan hole. So you have to pull the handle by your right knee, and then the, you can push oh, the pedals. Oh, this one I see. Push the pedals. Like push the brake pedal. Oh yeah, yeah. So you can get that room. Yeah, these seats are actually really comfortable. Yeah, it's it's really so cool. comfortable. These cars yeah. are a joy to drive. They really. Yeah. Everybody that has one absolutely loves them. I want one of these so bad, yeah, cool. but I'm gonna put a V8 in mine. <laughs> of course you are. It's 100% gonna happen. Why not a V10? 
Because I, I, I think I think the the Predator V8, the GT500 engine, would just it would just appease the audience. Actually, you know what though too? I mean, it being a Ford motor, it makes it not such a Frankenstein car. You know? It wouldn't be a Frankenstein car. It would be a factory upgrade that would be available <laughs> only oh, with me. <laughs> go ahead, check it out. There you go. All right. It's really nice, right? <laughs> right there I just pulled that's it out. that's why this is that's why this is mm -hmm. that's, Might have a hard time that's where you were at trunk huh <laughs> you just need that black over the stripes that'd be solid I don't like the stripes actually I kinda, okay. yeah I like kind of breaks it up I like, yeah I like with the interior you just push down it's like the carbon the shot is like this direction dude look yeah, at this because yeah. that flying buttress and what's, what's interesting is you can kind of follow the airflow and look and see where it goes to create downforce yeah it hits the side car. of the door and just starts pushing further and further and then wing pops up just to get a little bit more downforce my, my only complaint of the car is that it's 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 very light it makes about 660 horsepower the, sh the gearbox is really good but the ergonomics of, of everything in here are a little too far away it's like seat do this move. Oh, yeah it move. and do oh, this and oh, do so this that's why the seat oh yeah, that's yeah the, the pedal pedals and so but like in a law ferrari which has the same yep. stuff I, I mean for me you know i can move this forward but i'm i'm sitting back here and i can't turn the radio so on you, sitting have that yeah, you yeah. don't have that problem <laughs> unless the seats are kind of set in yeah them, you know? i mean it's so comfortable yeah it is but that really was my only complaint when i drove that car that i couldn't really reach anything one thing about this car that i'm so into is that it doesn't cost money to own it it doesn't cost money to insure it it doesn't no. cost money to maintain it no. it doesn't cost money to fix it if you stuff this thing into a wall, it'll probably be expensive. But if you blow a gearbox or you blow an engine, it's not gonna break you like an Aventador yeah, will. I'm just saying from my standpoint, I modify everything and this is a lot less expensive to mess with than something on the higher end. How do you have yeah. a Shiro with no PPF? I don't know, right? This insane. Uh, in front end, so the bottom of the bumper needs to be taken up and repainted. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, it's got that all dialed in. It's, it's actually not as clean as I thought it was. I mean, it's cool, like, where, where did you go? Where did you drive it? Like, just dead cool. drive it. Just had drive it every single day. The blue is not as bad as it looks in pictures. In the, in the light, it like highlights it a little bit more. Yeah, the front yeah. has PPF, but not the whole body. All the seats are, these things are flat. The, the one thing about the Chiron seat versus the Veyron seat is that they're a lot thinner. So they yeah. wear faster. I'm down, dude. I, like I said, when, when he's ready to come down to reality, let's make a deal. I really think this would be a cool project for me. I've been working on getting another Agera, but it's just not working out. Jesco's have to drop before I can get an Agera. This car here has uh, 21,000 miles on it, and I thought it'd be a great project car for me to get that would be a compliment to the Veyron because we're ending the Veyron project, and yeah. we need something new so that we can get uh, get things going. And I, I don't say that this is ugly or nice or old or bad or what, it's just, it's a very well used car, so the barrier to entry is less at the cost point than a 3,000 mile car. I'm looking at changing the Chiron completely or modifying the Pagani, but with the Agera, I'm looking just to buy it and just smile. <laughs> like, Christian already built the perfect car for me. I'll get back to there. Once the Jesco's come, people that have the Agera RS's will be more inclined to sell them because typically one Koenigsegg in the garage is enough for some people. Mm -hmm. Some people like myself, maybe it's not, but <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, you know, these, uh, all these cars now, I mean, look how that wire looks actually, I mean, I'm not like a big fan of the white, but yeah. the white looks so dope. It does. Yeah. Like it looks like so unique, but there's a couple other places 
that we can go and check out some some new cars and some new stuff so there's other semi project cars available in la so we came out here to to look at this car specifically mm -hmm. and i've made him a couple offers on this car we've raised it up a little bit my last offer is kind of like my best offer mm -hmm. so we can be patient and, and figure this out but until that happens we're gonna we're gonna wait on it Good, dude. You, you gotta get a V12 with the doors going <laughs> off, you know? <laughs> Nothing better than that. Still, I'm still having a really hard time deciding. <laughs> I'm still having a really hard time with this. Like it's a, it's really hard. It's tough. Brings me back to those childhood days, you know, That's growing right. up playing with little Lamborghinis and whatnot. It's always been the goal, you know. Doors that goes up with a V12. That's yeah. the way to go. A little more sportier, I think, than the, than the GT. Yeah, absolutely. Sick look. I mean, it's, car, it's a car I've always had in my mind, you know. Now it's time to step up to the V12, the, to the big boy. The big boy right yep. there. Rolling around with Houston for so long, you know, they got all the fast cars <laughs> and the big boys can't be rolling around with a little Huracan yep. anymore, you know. So, yep. I mean, you can't beat the look, you know. It looks like it's going 200 miles an hour just sitting, <laughs> just sitting there, you know. Yep, yep, yep. That thing is sick, man. I don't know, but we got to check that thing out right there. Yeah. That's the latest and greatest right there. That's yep. where it's at. So, let's check that bad boy out. What do you think? Man, I love it. I mean, not only is it mean the latest and greatest, but the technology and everything to do with the new hybrid and keeping with that true V12, you know, man, thing is just looking slick. I mean, I really, really love a Roadster, but those haven't come out yet. Man, I mean, just look at it. like though. the Venador, you know, yeah. just looks like it's going 200 miles an hour just sitting there yeah. with all the new tech and everything, you know, I'm gotta enjoy it and see how it is. That's Let's right, go. baby. How was it? I'm, gonna let, I'm not gonna say anything until yeah. you drive it. I wanted to hit it, you know what I mean? But I was like, uh, <laughs> it's not slow. No, it's definitely not slow. It, it, it's just like the technical, the, where the valve, though, it, you really don't hear anything until yeah. 3,000 RPM, yeah. you know? So, very I mean, very quiet, very, it's Huracan esque, which is a great thing. I think the V12 product can now be enjoyed by everybody yeah. because the V12 product predecessor is a little aggressive since they wanted to get away from the single clutch but then when you're in a rally and you want to enjoy it and oh, go fast you know what i mean you, you just love that feeling you mm -hmm. know what i mean kind of just yeah. sits you in that seat and jerk you back a little bit it really makes you kind of get into it and enjoy it but the car is awesome we're three shopping or what we can get a revolto sooner than later I, I think that's the way to go i mean it definitely looks better i think it looks better than the aventador i'm not really into the weird exhaust uh, overtail spoiler thing but that's the only part of the car that i i'm nitpicking and i think the rest of it looks awesome yeah when the wing comes up it it definitely cuts off a little bit of the view but yeah I, it looks a lot better with the wing up for sure yeah yeah i like the uh, open engine very yeah. cool just makes me want to stay in the lamborghini family though you know yep. nick i've been trying to convince him to get a new body ford gt well he wants an eight hundred thousand uh, dollar svj roadster and i was like you know i don't know if that's the right move because those guys that have those cars are probably some of the first 200 people that are getting these cars. The guys got rid of them a long time ago. Did they? When those cars were all like a million bucks. Yeah, yeah. So well, I, I mean, I would get say. a lot of those on trade. And I think a lot of guys will hang on to those being like the last NA non-hybrid car. So How I don't- do you drive this? I do feel like the SVJ is gonna hang on to itself. I don't know how good the value is gonna be, but the experience is 100% polar opposite. Oh, yeah. is, this is yeah. not a better version yeah. of an SVJ. Okay. This is a different car. Mm -hmm.
didn't drive it fast because I know the car is fast. I know the car has good handling and everything because that's what those cars are built for yeah. is the, the numbers game. But what they don't account for is real life driving. And so I, when I drove it, I wanted to drive it slow and it is relatively jerky, especially for a dual clutch. It's kind of funny because it shifts a lot. Yeah. And it's a lot smoother. Like I was telling Houston, when you want to go fast, everybody says, oh, we want to get away from that single clutch like an SVJ or a Venador. But you really like that feeling because it gives you that supercar experience. That was like almost like driving a Huracan that just goes a little faster and it's a little bit louder, you know what I mean? With a little bit more room. It, you kind of get to appreciate the, the old school single, uh, single clutch a little bit more, but- Because it's emotional. Yeah. It's emotional. That car, it, there's no emotion in a Huracan with an exhaust, with a couple things, you know what I mean? You can make emotion come out of it. It needs a little help. Let's just say, percentage-wise, you can maybe get 10% emotion in a Huracan out of an Aventador where you're getting 95%. Like, an Aventador is so extreme. Yeah. I don't know, dude. I don't I don't like the value prop, to be honest. I don't, I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I, I don't see those cars doing 300 over, 400 over. I mean, but maybe they do because it's smooth. Yeah, it really is. And that's why I was saying that's like a rally car. You could enjoy the shit out of it in a rally. You know what I mean? It's just stop and go traffic, super comfortable, get in. And then when you want to hit it, one of, I guess, 30 fucking different modes that you can, <laughs> can select, <laughs> adjust it and, and rip, you know?